Friday and Saturday. I was just not feeling the best. I just wasn't feeling very good. So, anyways, I will be sharing some paranormal stories with you guys. And, okay, let's get started. The first story will be something that happened around my area, which is Kansas City. And I have this little book here, which I will be reading you the story from. The name of the story is voice in the voice in the dark friends ruth and john were nervous and not just a little nervous but very nervous what had started out as a passing comment made just soon found them in the middle of this tiny cemetery on a pitch black night in the middle of december there was snow on the ground from the last storm, the girls were bundled up. They felt ready for whatever they might find and were armed with a digital camera and a tape recorder for their first and only ghost hunting experience. The previous weekend, they had been watching a ghost hunting show on television and decided to try it out themselves. Ruth had received a digital camera as an early Christmas gift and Dawn had found a digital tape recorder in her family's hall closet. Loaded down with their tools, they parked at the entrance to the cemetery and entered cautiously. They felt a little foolish at first and just sort of wandered carefully around, respectful of where they stepped amongst the graves. Soon, however, they were caught up in reading some of the headstones and sort of relaxed into the experience. They sped a blanket down on a bare patch beneath one of the winter bare trees and settled upon it to get their bearings. They decided that the first thing they would do was try to capture a was try to capture proof of spirits via the digital camera. Ruth took it out of her bag and began taking pictures. She pointed it at a Pacific grave sites, at the tree above them, out toward the horizon, and down the hill, away from the cemetery. As she pointed it at dawn to see if any spirits were hanging around her as well, she chuckled a little. Dawn would totally freak out if they found a ghoul hovering over her later. Ruth sat back down and the teens began to view the photos just taken. They laughed nervously as the light from the view screen flickered eerily in the night. Television shows had educated them on what to look for. Bright round lights called orbs or a series of orbs strung together. Excitedly, they viewed the no visual clues and were the ghosts there were with them in the graveyard that night. Disappointed but not deterred, deterred, sorry, the girls set up the tape recorder on the blanket next to them. They made sure that nothing around them would make any sound like their winter coats or shoes. And they started recording. Dawn spoke quietly into the nothingness. Hi, I'm Dawn, and this is Ruth. We are wondering if there were any spirits that would like to talk with us. It was an invitation to the spirits, a way to let them know that they were willing to listen. No, no, <laughs> no immediate response was heard and the girls looked at one another and shrugged. It was probably too much to ask for a ghost to just pop out and say hi. A car drove past along the breeze moving through the trees above them. The night was quiet again. A few seconds passed a dog barked and was answered by another and still another. 
like the little doggy phone chain by the newbie ghost hunters sat still for a while longer and when no other sounds came out of the eerie dark night don turned off the tape recorder and prepared to replay it are you ready asked don ruth nodded and took a deep breath don pushed the play button and they heard don's tentative introduction hi i'm don this is ruth we are wondering if there is anyone here that would like to talk with us then there was silence then the car then silence then the kind kind canine in communication network a few more seconds of silence and then they heard a scratchy voice that could have been a woman's just away both girls froze what just away what does that mean but before they could speak the same voice was heard on the recording this time more clearly and forcefully just go away i'm tired the girls looked around almost frantically was the voice of the was the voice the owners talking to them and who was it why they did not say they did not stay to ponder those questions at the cemetery the friends grabbed all of their belongings and raced for their car over the next few weeks and months they would pass by the place often and they never returned that night and they never forgot their ghostly encounter. Just go away, I'm tired. And guys, these are actually really true stories. I got this book from, oh gosh. I think I got it from Barnes and Noble or something. And I was like, hey, this is interesting. And it has all these stories of people's paranormal stories that associates with something like a cemetery or just, you know, anything. Um, and also one with Jesse James, which a lot of people know who that is. Okay, so the second story I'm going to share is my paranormal experience. My first paranormal experience, which is just my first one. Um, I haven't really had any more, but this has been happening continuously in my house. Now, where I live, the Oregon Trail kind of, it goes right in front of my neighborhood. And if you guys don't know what the Oregon Trail is, it's just something that the pioneers traveled through and all that history and stuff. And it, and that trail just runs right through my neighborhood. And so I think that's why they're hearing these noises. Well, in my house a few weeks ago it was just me i was alone in my room and i heard something fall like it broke and like it was glass and i turned around there was nothing there nothing fell i'm not crazy i heard it and now i hear like at night shuffling around in my house and nothing's really moved or anything i have lost a few things that i don't know where they are like I set them somewhere and it's gone the next day also I don't know like if this is really anything or this just happens to phones but my phone this is this probably happened like two months ago my phone kept I don't know why but I would put it on the charger it would be on at night well when I wake up in the morning it's totally off luckily this happens like on a Friday night like the weekend so it doesn't really matter but I mean if this would have happened over like the weekday then that would be very bad for me because I would not be getting up well that kept happening to me a few times my phone would just keep it would just turn off like I don't I do not press it or anything to like turn it off or slide it I do not turn my phone off at night and it was just really weird to come to it and see my phone turned off when I wake up. Well, I have, like, I asked everybody the next day, like, I asked my mom, I asked my dad, I asked my brother, and I asked my sister. They said they did not come in and turn my phone off. So, who knows? It could have been a ghost. But, yeah, those are my paranormal experiences. 
And that was one little paranormal story. If you guys like this, please give it a thumbs up. And I guess every Sunday I can do this. Maybe every so often. I mean, if you guys like this, please give it a thumbs up, like I said. And bye!